Hallelujah. Shalom. God bless you so much. It's a wonderful, beautiful day. And we thank God for the life that He has given to us. I want to say a wonderful thank you to the Holy Spirit and to our Lord Jesus for showing us mercy. And I want to say a big thank you to you also for joining us all the time and sharing the link, inviting people and bringing people to truth and life. Child of God, we thank God that you have the strength and you have the data <laughs> to be here. God bless you so much. You have the heart. You have all the enthusiasm. I want you to begin to put yourself in place because our Lord Jesus is here. Therefore, truth and life is here. I want you to put yourself in place, put yourself in order wherever you are, check your environment, make sure that you are not distracted by anything. The kind of life that is coming to us today probably has never hit you before. I know what I'm saying. God's grace is so mighty enough for us today. Child of God, wherever you are, get your hearts ready. Get your hearts ready. Get your hearts ready. And share the link. Let somebody come here and join truth and life. I want you to type your name, type your location, and say shalom, shalom, shalom. In the next 30 seconds, I want you to pray and ask God for understanding. Ask God for intense enlightenment of your eyes that you may be able to understand the mysteries of God and the will of the Father in perfection. In the name of Jesus, in the next case, begin to pray. Child of God, wherever you are, begin to pray. Just pray. Pray, 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 pray. Lift your voice wherever you are and pray. Something big is coming. Ask God for capacity to hold on to every power, every might, every grace that is coming upon you. You need this. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. We give you praise that you have given us understanding and you have given us all trances. In Jesus' mighty name. Wherever you are, say amen. Type amen. God bless you. Today, God has a very wonderful message for us, which I believe it's a message that will change your life and your work with God for good. I believe that you are interested in what I have to say today because of the topic that you saw. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we thank God that you are so ready. I can feel it. I feel it. <laughs> I feel it that you are so ready. God is ready for you. Uh, child of God, I want us to understand something that is critical in our dispensation. Something that we have to bring the body of Christ to uh, that understanding. Else there is not going to be any hope for the generation that we are in and the generation to come. 
if there would be. I pray that even if the number that is live right now is not so much this particular this particular message will go so viral until every man of God and every child of God hears what God has for us today and forever. There is something that I have realized by the Spirit and by my senses in the spirit that I've seen that if we don't address as the church as the body of Christ as disciples of Christ or as Christians if you call it as that we are going to be in trouble we are going to be overtaken by the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. We are going to lose our Lord Jesus, his standards of life. We are going to lose the principles and the perfect will of God for his body if we don't address this issue. I want you to understand that the way that man sees things, the way that man judges things, is not the same way God judges things. The last time I was teaching about the Bible, what we call even the Old Testament and the New Testament, and I was Breaking things down for us to understand even how theologians have separated the Bible. How Christians that we call fathers, we call elders of the early church, they went about in naming things according to their own understanding. Which, one way or the other, is accepted by the body of Christ but that judgment that analysis is flawed is problematic in the sight of God I want you to analyze something how God himself God himself appeared to Abimelech in a dream and told Abimelech that the woman that you have taken is the wife of a prophet and Abimelech had taken the wife of Abraham because Abraham had gone into the land of the Philistines and he had told the king that Sarah is his sister. And Abimelech took Sarah for him, uh, himself. And God appeared to Abimelech and said to him, that the woman that you have taken is the wife of a prophet. Child of God, this is God himself calling Abraham a prophet. But today, if you tell theologians to list the prophets in the Bible, even if, if I ask you, to list the prophets that lived in the Bible. You would never mention the name of Abraham. You would say Isaiah. You would say Jeremiah. You would say Samuel. You would say Elijah. You are never going to say Abraham. 
And yet God himself is calling Abraham a prophet. Let's read. Genesis 20, the verse number 3. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Behold, thou art but a dead man. Mm. For the woman which thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. Uh -huh. But Abimelech had not come near her. Mm. And he said, Lord, would thou slay also a righteous nation? Uh -huh. Sa said he not unto me, she is my sister. Okay. So go to the next place where God is saying he is the wife of a prophet. He is a prophet. Uh -huh. Verse 7. Now therefore restore the man his wife, uh -huh. for he is a prophet. This is God telling Abimelech, restore the man his wife, because he is a prophet. And Abraham is not a prophet to you. But to God is calling someone a prophet. Why I'm saying this, child of God, get this. Why I'm saying this, I'm starting with this, is for you to understand that what you have come to meet, what you think is popular, what people that thought that they know the systems of the spirit, the systems of God have put in place, those things are not, are not always right with God. Some of their judgments are flawed. Some of the things that they have put in place and say, these are the prophets. They would never add Abraham. There's a very popular scripture in your Bible. You know that one. Uh, we says, touch not my anointed. And do my prophets no harm. Psalm 105 verse 15. Do not touch my... I want you to go to the <laughs> two verses before that. You will see the people that God is calling his prophets. Psalm 105. Uh-huh. The verse number four, 13. Uh -huh. When they went from one nation to another, mm. from one kingdom to another people, uh -huh. he suffered no man to do them wrong. He's talking about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. When they were moving from country to country because they were nomads, there were people that did not stay in one place. As they were moving from nation to nation, seeking refuge and living from country to country, before they settled in the land of Canaan, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God is saying he suffered no one, he allowed no one to do them harm. Yea. Yea. He proved kings for their sakes. God reproved kings like as we read how God reproved Abimelech for the sake of Abraham. Uh -huh. Saying, Say, touch not my anointed. Touch not my anointed. And do my prophets no harm. And do my prophets no harm. This word was given by who? It was given by God to people who wanted to harm Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in their movements towards the promised land. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you would not call them prophets. And yet God is calling them his anointed and his prophets to the kings that they went into their lands to the people 
that they went into their lands. Anyone that they encountered, God warned those people and said, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Child of God, there are people that you don't call prophets. And yet God is calling them prophets. There are people that you don't respect. And yet God respects. There are people that even your theologians don't recognize them as apostles. And yet Jesus calls them his apostles. Child of God, I'm saying this so that you begin to calm down and look at things from the perspective of God. Because there is a mindset, there is a message that is going on and has gone for a long time. That has creeped into the minds of children of God and has broken our faith and our hope in Christ down. Our love of God and our love for God has become so weak. The way we rejoice and we thank God has now been based on a certain kind of message that is not Christ at all. Are we here? Are we fine? Ah. Because now it looks like <laughs> The only blessing that God can give to a person, the only blessing that a Christian can have in his life is a material blessing. If we say that God has blessed someone now, then it means that the person has five houses. He has built a certain factory. He has children. He has a wife. He has houses. He has cars. And then we look at that and we say that God has blessed this man. Am I disqualifying these things I've mentioned to be blessings from God? No. All these things that I've mentioned are also blessings that come from God. But if you are going to be basing your life and your relevance in Christ based on these things that now it has made Christianity become a mockery. If you are going to base your relevance on these things, child of God, you are never going to have peace in God. Never. Believe me. You are never going to have any peace in God in this life. I want us to read quickly something. I did not want to, to touch this earlier. But I don't want to waste much time on this very same one because I want it to, to be short enough so that people can listen to it. So let's, let's rush. This same one, I would have to rush on it. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the verse number 90. Son of God, listen to this carefully. First. Corinthians chapter 15 the verse number 19 if in this life this is the apostle Paul talking to the church in Corinth talking to the body of Christ and is telling them if in this life only if in this life this current life that we are in this world 
we have hope in Christ. If in this life only that we have hope in Christ, the hope that we have in Christ that makes us to be able to stand in Him, to rejoice in Him, to thank Him, to praise Him, and not look at the world and the last of it. Our ability to shun the corruption of this world. That is called the hope in Christ. Our confidence in Christ that he is going to be able to deliver. He is powerful enough to heal. He is powerful enough to bless. He is powerful enough to enrich. He is powerful enough to raise a person. That is our hope in Christ. If it is only in this life, we are of all men most miserable. Did you hear that? He's talking not to everyone. He's talking to the body of Christ, children of God. And he is telling them that if only in this life we have hope in Christ, then we are of all men, all sections of life, all religions, all peoples. Christians are the most miserable. Oh, you have to look at that scripture again. You have to look at it. You have to take your time and look at it carefully. That if all that Jesus can do for you is what you, you can get in this life. I don't know what you want from Christ. I don't know what is your hope in Christ. You can list it. But if it is only in this life, you are miserable. You are very miserable if all that Jesus can do for you ends in this life. It can't be found in the next one. Why he's saying that is because he's talking to children of God and children of God are not going to argue that there is a next life. Other people can say, if you die, that's all. There's no other world. It's a lie. I'm not talking to you. Don't, don't stress yourself. This is not your sermon. I'll come to you another time. I'm talking about children of God who believe that there is a moment coming where all eyes will see him. There is a moment coming where we are going to be taken within a twinkling of an eye by the sound of the last trumpet. We believe that anyone that is not born of God, anyone that is not born again, anyone that does not have the spirit of Christ, is going to suffer eternal condemnation. And it is only Christians that are going to live in that next life. Everyone that is not born again is going to be condemned. So Christians, we believe that there is a next life. So you are the one that I'm talking to. So there is this life, and then there is a next life. Now, the apostle is saying, if you hope in Christ, everything that you believe that Jesus can do for you, only ends in this life. You are of all men most miserable. Oh, oh, <clears throat> my God, this is, this is serious. Imagine, child of God, imagine that Jesus can make you build a house. Jesus 
can make you buy a car. I'm not saying Jesus cannot give you that. I'm saying, if Jesus does that for you only in this life, if you hope in Christ and you receive that hope only in this life, I'm not here to say this, this, I'm not here to list the hopes that people have in Christ. Everyone has their hope. In Christ but if your hope is limited to this to this life that we are living I believe that I'm, 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 I'm touching it if I'm going too fast please you can type so that they will read for me I will slow down for you but I want I want to make sure that every child of God who encounters this sermon would understand me I like to go slow, but because of time, I'm, I'm, I know that I'm speaking quite fast. But I still don't want to miss you. So if I miss you, just let me know. Child of God, get this. Everything that Jesus can do for you, what the Apostle Paul is saying, can you read another version, please? Probably the King James is, is, is causing problems. This is what the Apostle Paul is telling the body of Christ, the church. Amplified. Uh -huh. If we mm -hmm. who are abiding in Christ. <coughs> Thank you, Amplified. <laughs> if, if, if we who are abiding who in Christ. Are abiding in Christ. Have hoped only in this life. If we have hoped only in this life. If all that we can achieve. Mm -hmm. All that we can have, all our success, is only in this life. Then we are of all people most miserable and to be pitied. What is inspiring the Apostle Paul to say this? What is inspiring the Apostle Paul to tell the body of Christ? That if all that we can have is limited to this life, if our praises, our thanksgiving, our rejoicing in Christ is only based to the things that we can achieve in this life, then we are the most pitiable and miserable of all men. What is making him say this? Revelation chapter 3, the verse number 17, Jesus appears to John and is writing, is giving him this revelation to write it and give it to the body of Christ, to the church. Revelation 3 verse 17. And this is the will of Jesus that the apostle Paul tapped into and he gave it to the church of Corinth. Jesus is also appearing to John and is telling John this. Child of God, look at this. Highlight this in your Bible. Uh -huh. Because thou say it, mm -hmm. I am rich. Jesus is saying, you are saying that I am rich. And increased with goods. And I am increased with goods. And have need of nothing. Now, you don't, don't think that the people saying this are lying. They are not lying. In accordance to this life, it is not a lie. They are actually rich. They have actually increased in goods. They have their private jets. They have the, the buildings, the infrastructures. They have the Louis Vuitton, the Doji and Gabon. They have all these Rolls Royces parked in their garages, they are not lying. They say they are rich, they are increased in goods, uh -huh. and have need of nothing. And they have need of nothing, their bank account is fat. And knowest not that thou art wretched. And Jesus is saying, and yet, these people don't know that they are wretched. And miserable. And they are miserable. And poor. 
and they are poor and blind and they are blind and naked and they are naked oh i love jesus oh i i i i, I love i love him <coughs> this guy can 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 make everything look useless these guys are increased in goods and he's saying you are wretched you are poor you are miserable you are blind they are not lying and jesus is also not lying hey they are not lying if they say they have increased in goods, they're not lying. They can see it. And Jesus is also saying, yet they are broke, they are poor, they are wretched. And Jesus is also not lying. Why? Because Jesus is speaking from a life that is different from the life that we are in now. The life that we are in now Everyone would say they are rich because their name is in Forbes. Forbes has counted them to be the 50 richest people in Africa. <laughs> 100 richest people in Asia. The world has looked at their net worth and the world is saying, that they are rich. Even they also claim I'm the richest in Africa. I'm the richest in Ghana. I'm the richest in Ethiopia. I'm the richest in America. I'm a billionaire. I've increased in goods. And yet Jesus is saying they are wretched. Who are you going to believe now? Isaiah asked the question, whose report? <laughs> Whose report do you believe, child of God? Jesus is calling rich people poor people. And he's going to tell you why. He's going to tell you why. Continue. Sir. Verse 18. Uh -huh. I counsel thee to buy of me gold. Jesus is saying that... <laughs> The gold that this, these people have, he's telling them that it's not gold. Mm. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. Buy original gold from me. If you want to own gold, original gold is from me. Mm. It's not from Obwasi gold mines. Hey, continue. That thou mayest be rich. Uh -huh. And white raiment, uh -huh. that thou mayest be clothed, uh -huh. and that the shame of thy nakedness <laughs> do not appear. Jesus is saying, if you have to be clothed, this from me. And yet these people already have their, their closet, their locker is, is full. These people is talking about, they don't have even a wardrobe. They have a room for, for, for clothes. Some of them, their, their, their room for clothes is, is, like, is like somebody's whole compound. Just for clothes and for shoes. For bags. And Jesus is saying to them, you still have to get a raiment from me, else you are naked. And anoint thy eyes with eyes leave, that thou mayest see. Uh-huh. As many as I love, as many as I love, I rebuke. Now he's talking to the body of Christ, saying, I, I'm rebuking you now because I love you. Mm. And testing. I'm chastening you. Be zealous, therefore, uh -huh. and repent. Verse 20. Verse 20. Uh -huh. Behold. Behold. I stand at the door. I stand at the door. And knock. And knock. If any man hear my voice, if any 
man hears my voice and opening the door, opens the door, I will come into him. I will come into him and will sup with him. And I will eat with him. And he with me. And he will eat with me. Now, child of God, he is now showing you why he's calling them broke. He's calling them broke because they don't have him in their heart. They have not received him into their lives. And so far as they are not in him and he's not in them, there is no communion between them and Christ. He, he considers them broke. He considers them wretched. And child of God, I'm not talking to the world because they would never believe this. But as for you, whose report do you believe? Jesus is saying, a person that does not have me, a person that I don't have communion with, a person that has not received me into his heart, a person that has not confessed to me as the Son of God and the Savior of the world, that person, no matter how much money he has, he is wretched and he is broke. Put him on Forbes, put him on any place, put him on any website. Jesus said, I should remind his children, if that person is not born again, if that person does not have the tag of Christ, that person is naked. No matter how many cars you see displayed there, no matter how many houses you see displayed no matter the companies that you see him own if he is not born of god if he is not born of christ don't envy such a person don't be jealous of such that person has to be pitied by you because if you are going to start comparing yourself to such a person child of god you are miserable because in this life those people will do well than Christians for sure. Why? Because the world belongs to their God. Hey. <laughs> it would never be possible. Look at me, child of God. Look into my eyes. I want media team cut this place. <laughs> Let this place go. Let now listen to me. Any man of God in the world who is born of God will believe what I'm about to say. If it's not, let's leave it. But listen to this. There is no moment in this world. There would never be a time in this world that a child of God will be the richest man in this world. Believe me, according to what you call riches in this world, financial riches, there would never be a moment where the richest person in this world will be a born again child of God. It would never happen until our Lord appears. It can't. It won't and it can't. This is why Paul says that if we are going to be struggling to be rich only in this life, <coughs> then we are going to be very miserable because every day we will still feel like we are not there. I'm healing you, child of God. This is healing taking place so that you would wake up tomorrow morning and if you see your integrity in Christ, you will rejoice and know and say, Maranatha, when would our Lord come? When will he come so that we can also reign on this earth? So far as the devil is still the God of this world, forget it. You are never going to be the richest person in this world. 
If you want to argue that, you have your keyboard. You can you can type. <laughs> this is why Paul is saying we, we, will, we, are the, we will be the most miserable. If you decide to make people that are not born again your standard of success, the world and the God of this world would never favor you. They will always choose their people over you. They will always entertain their people over you. Why? Because this is their place at the moment. No matter how you try to convince yourself the earth is ours, the earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, <clears throat> is the earth that is the Lord's. It's not the world. Mm. It is the earth that is the Lord's. It's not the world. The world is not for the Lord. The world is for the devil. The world is for Satan. The world is for demons. That is why Jesus said you are in this world. And yet you are not of the world. Why? Because the world is not for us. All the industries, child of God, all the industries that you can think of making money in, it is governed by the world. It is dictated by the world. It is ruled by the world. Politics, the world. Music, the world. Show me one industry that the church has more power than the world. One. Show me one industry where children of God are predominant in that area. Born again Christians are dominant in that area. You can go there, you can be there, but you will be crushed like, like a growing seed among tongues. They would make you know that, hey, 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 <coughs> your Jesus cannot dictate for us here. This is the message that you are not being told. That is why you are dying. That is why when you see one young guy who is driving a certain car, you want to kill yourself and buy some and prove that God has blessed you. Child of God. <laughs> Stephen did not buy one car. James was beheaded. John was fried in oil, thrown to the island of Patmos to die there because they were killing him, he was not dying. Peter was crucified upside down. Now today, are you going to tell me today, now, that these people were not blessed? Because they never built houses, they never owned cars, some of them never got married, some of them never had children, are you telling me today that this is your measurement of the blessing of God? The message of the cross is flawed. The message of Jesus is diluted, is now weak. This is why anyone, what everybody wants to make money. Because they know that when they make money and they come to your church, they can't be rebuked. They will not be seen as wretched. Even if he is a secular person, it's all over that this is a slave queen. It's all over that this guy is ragged. He is he's a rascal. So far as he has money, he comes to the church, you let him come and sit in front. So now everyone is... Is doing anything to get money. Why? Because even the man of God does not have the right to rebuke him anymore. Why? Because he has increased in goods. But I pray that God will raise men and women, pastors, who will tell people that call themselves honorable 
they come to the church and the usher is sitting them behind because their honorable is not honorable in this place the church has to make it clear the body of christ has to make it clear that we are not of the world therefore we will not entertain things of the world our decisions are flawed so right now people don't have peace anymore <laughs> People are frustrated because they don't believe that God has blessed them. Why? Because the people that we are saying, look at this man, God has blessed him. Oh, your child looks at the TV. He's watching TV with you. You're sitting with your wife. Then you see one guy singing a song. His, his trousers is almost removing from his body. Stopless tattoos all over his face, and he's singing a certain song that looks inspirational. And then you tell your wife, Ah, this guy, God has really blessed him. Your child has heard that. Your child looks at this person, he does he he knows that this is not how they sing at their choir in church. He knows that this is not the way that the pastor sings. Everything that this guy is doing is dancing behind the girl, twerking and he's smooching the girl. And yet you can still say that God has blessed this guy. What is the blessing of God here? These people come out. They advocate for hard drugs. These guys come out. They are dancing with naked women. And we still say that God has blessed these people. How can we say that God has blessed these people and yet we want our children to now become men of God? Our children will grow up to become like those people. Why? Because they heard you say God has blessed them. If you told your child that Dangote is blessed, <laughs> Hey, you think I will not talk about that? If we go about and say that Dangote, Dangote is the richest person in Africa. And then our children hear that. Whilst they are growing up, they go to the internet and they click Aliko Dangote. And they realize that Aliko Dangote is a Muslim. And according to Christianity, we know that Islamic religion does not have eternal life. Muslims, they don't have the spirit of Christ. So they don't belong to him. It's clear. There's no argument on that. That at the rapture, Dangote will not go. But you are telling your child that God has blessed Dangote. And your child looks at Dangote, he performs zakat. He does, he observes the fast of Ramadan. Idil Fitil, Idil Adah, he looks at the man. Now your child wants to be the richest man. And then your child says that now I'm going to be a Muslim. Why are you not going to allow your child to be a Muslim? And yet, you are, you are using an Islamic person, a Muslim figure, to admonish your child. Are there not other rich people in Christ? Who, can, who, have, who have increased in goods and yet they are in Christ? That we can use as children of God to advise our people. Why Bill Gates? Why Elon Musk? Why Mark Zuckerberg? Why are these names even in the mouth of men of God? These are wretched people. <laughs> these are wretched people. These are poor people. These are naked people. So how can we 
be talking about if we are talking about making money we have to talk about making money in Christ these people did not make their money in Christ and we know that they don't have him in their lives their standards and their principles of making money and doing well is different And yet they have become our standard. They have become the status quo. They have become the measuring rod of riches. And yet we know that they are poor. Child of God, <laughs> I want us to look at something because the world has now made riches as a as, uh, a measurement of God's blessing. Anytime we see somebody having money, it means God has blessed the person. God, God is pleased with the person. I had one man of God. I, 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 I respect that man of God so much. Even up to now, though that statement, I looked at him, I said, Sir, oh no. He quoted a scripture and said, The rich rule it over the poor. And the borrower is a slave to the lender. And he said that if you are a Christian and you are poor, still a rich person that is not in Christ will rule over you. He's ruling over you. If you don't have money, he's ruling over you. Then the church is being ruled over, including you, say. That man of God forgot that Aliko Dangote is richer than him. But if I say that Aliko is ruling over him, he will say no. He's in Christ. He reigns. <laughs> you are not reigning, sir. You are not. Why? Because he's saying that probably because he has made enough money. So he's in the class where he feels like he's rich. So he's saying to a certain young boy who is now coming up in the church, probably he's in the prayer department and then he's broke. He's, he doesn't have enough money. He's living hand to mouth. And he's saying that because he thinks that if he says that it will, it will, it will push the guy to work hard. No. If you are going to, if you want somebody to work hard, you don't use the riches of the world to undermine. There are other things to say so that a person would work hard. Not to say that a person, if he's rich and he's still not born again, he will still rule over a child of God. That's a lie and you know that. Children of God, we are the restraining force. A child of God that is born again and does not have a dime in his pocket is still valuable than the richest man who does not have God in him. We have to begin from there. Before we begin to talk about having money, building a house, getting married, we have to, we have to make sure that we know the greatest essence of Jesus Christ coming down to this earth. Before Jesus came to die, people were rich. So how can you accept Jesus? And then the only thing that now men of God can be saying, that how can people say, this is the richest man of God? And what they will say is, this one has $200 million. Five, this one has $150 you are, you are You are sick. <coughs> Any person going about doing that is sickness. How do you, what's that? <laughs> what's that? How does the riches of a man of God, a man of God, the riches of a man of God is now how much money he has in his bank account? Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Colossians 3.16 Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. The riches of a man of God is the amount of word, revelation that he has, not money. This is 
why now men of God are showcasing their cars, showcasing houses, so that people will feel like God has blessed them. What will Peter showcase? What will Paul showcase? What will Philip showcase? Philip sat in the chariot of an Ethiopian eunuch. And yet the Ethiopian eunuch had to bow to Philip, who was walking on foot. Isn't that, isn't that what Christ actually gave to us? Isn't that what Christ actually gave to us? I'm not speaking against chariots. I'm not speaking against owning a car, having a private jet as a man of God. But if you think that is the proof, then you yourself, you are also wretched. You, that man of God, you are also poor, you are also naked, you are also broke. You can't be reading the book of Peter, you can't be reading the book of Paul and be claiming that you are rich. And yet the people that wrote those books, what you are saying that you are rich, which means that God has blessed you, they never had it. Are you there? Uh huh. Luke chapter 12. The verse number 16. Luke 12. The verse number 16. Uh huh. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, Jesus spake a parable to them, saying, Uh huh. The ground of a certain rich man mm. brought forth plentifully. Verse the 17. ground of a certain rich man, Jesus is called a rich man, brought forth plentifully. Uh -huh. And he thought within himself, saying, mm. What shall I do? Mm. Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. He has had a plentiful harvest, and his warehouse can't contain his goods anymore. He has increased in goods. And he said, Uh huh. This will I do. Mm -hmm. I will pull down my barns. I will open my warehouse. And build greater. Mm -hmm. And there will I bestow all my fruits then and my goods. Then I will put my goods into the bigger warehouse. Is this a crime? Uh-huh. Verse 19. Mm. And I will say to my soul. Now this is the crime. Mm. So. My soul. Thou had much goods laid down for many years. You have you you have much goods laid down for many years. Why? Because the soul is now putting his soul into this life only. Take thy ease. He has trusted the peace of his soul, the safety of his soul, to goods that can sustain him only in this life. Take thy ease. Uh huh. Eat, eat, drink, drink, and be merry. Be merry. Verse 20. Uh -huh. But God said unto him, Then God came and said to him, Thou fool. You are rich, but you are a fool. Mm. This is what makes the rich man a fool. Thou fool. You are a fool. You have money. You are part of Forbes. First five, first ten. And yet God is saying you are a fool. And your folly is because your soul does not have peace in God. The ease of your soul is attached to your own riches. And God is calling that foolishness. So no matter how much money Dan Gotti has, if his soul is not attached to Christ, this is his scripture. And I'm asking which man of God, I know probably he might not hear me, but I know one man of God would hear me. Who is above and can speak this? I want somebody to tell. All the men of God, all the rich people in the, that class who are not of Christ, that they are fools. <coughs> oh, oh. Ah, I'm for this. I'm for this. I felt like closing. No. I'm, I'm for this. Hey. Can you look at.
at a rich man and see the attachment of his soul and still look at his face and say, Sir, this is foolishness. All this money that you have acquired, if you don't have Christ, is foolishness. Uh huh. Thou fool, mm -hmm. this night, this night, thy soul shall be required of thee. I will take your soul from you, I will show you whose souls belong to. Then who shall those things be? The things you have gathered, you would know that it will be in just anybody's hand. Mm, which thou had provided. Men of God, all over the world, I pray this would reach you. Can we tell all these so-called honorables, all these politicians, presidents, all these mayors who are not born again, that they are wretched. Can we treat them like ordinary people when they come into our church? Don't lie to me, sir. Don't tell me that they are not wretched. You are not Jesus. Jesus has already said it. You don't have anything to walk around it. A person that is not born again, if he is vice president, president, excellency, if you can't preach Christ to him, if you can't preach Christ to him and say, Sir, you have to be born again. I love you. I like what you are doing for our country. But sir, that is just to this life. I want you to be a better person in the next life. I present to you our Lord Jesus Christ. Receive him a peace. For the rest of your life, save your soul from condemnation. Do we still have men of God with that those bowls to say, Sir, if you are not born again, you don't bring tight. We don't receive this thing from people that have not accepted our Lord. This is blood money. It's filthy money. We can't take it. Our standards are flawed. People are going through, they are breaking down. Integrity is not celebrated anymore. If you don't steal, and you are working loyally working in loyalty and not stealing the company's money and they realize that this person has never pilfered you will still not be celebrated when you steal the company's money and you buy a car and you bring it to that same company they will still be hailing you that you are a very very serious guy a serious guy <laughs> and yet the one who is not stealing the money is seen that he's, he's, he's joking, he's playing. Proverbs chapter 19, the best number one. Look at this. Child of God, let me strengthen you because people have broken your, your confidence in Christ. Proverbs 19, the verse number one. Uh -huh. Better is the better, poor. Better, better is the poor. That worked in his integrity. If he is working in integrity, and it is causing him to be poor. It's better. Than he that is perverse in his lips. Than somebody who is a liar. He is mischievous. And is a fool. He has gotten money out of perversion. And he's a fool. Hmm. Better is a poor man. With integrity. Am I asking you to be poor? No. 
Hey, 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 I am not poor. <laughs> but there are things that I could have done that you could have said he is rich. He is so rich, he is so rich, he is so rich that I did not do because I chose integrity over that money. And it will make some people call me poor. But I know that they are rather poor. They are rather wretched and they are rather naked. If you only believe in Jesus, child of God. If you only believe that there is a next life. And you should have hope in that next life. You would know how to be content with what God gives you. You would know how to just follow your lane and do well and, and get wealthy by Christ. Can't you see that the world system, it has made it like, if you don't, if you don't cheat, you, you can't make money. <coughs> uh, people that are in the industries, they know. It looks like if you are not, if you don't do some kululu kalala, huh? If you don't try to be perverse a bit, you might not, you might not be rich. So now perversion, cheating, passing back door, kululu kalala, bribery and corruption <coughs> is not a sin anymore. Uh, no, 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 no. It's not a sin. I remember one of my sons told me something. Let's let's end it today. I said I, I wanted this one to be short. Ah, he's short in Jesus' name. <laughs> he told me of a man that was dealing in drugs, medication. He was in a church. He was sponsoring the church, building auditorium for the church. Every fundraising is the chairman. He would give big amounts of money. And yet, what he was doing was that he was, he was in the pharmaceuticals. He will go and he will buy expired drugs. Drugs that are expired from pharmacy that are going to travel. He will buy them and he will take them to the rural areas. And sell them to the pharmacies there, drug stores there. Because they will not check. You know, these, these rural people, they don't even check expiry dates. And that was how he was making his money until he got sick. The church prayed for him. He was not getting healed. Every hospital, they could not even find what was happening to him until God revealed to the man of God, this is what the man had been doing. And yet he was being celebrated by the church. And people were dying by the hand of the man. Innocent blood were on his hands. In rural areas, people have lost parents, lost children, lost siblings and loved ones because a man is building a church. A man is building a temple through innocent blood. Is this what Jesus left for us? What is wrong with us now? What is it? What does money come to do to us? That the moment somebody has money now, we don't care what he believes in. We don't care what he worships. It is the money that we are looking for. So we find ourselves falling to the last of the flesh, the last of the eyes, and the pride of life. Jesus left a certain mountain with nothing in his pocket. And yet, the devil had presented all the riches of the world to him. He said, it is for me, collect it. Just bow to me, I'll give you all this money. Jesus would have been the richest man on earth from that day. He left that mountain with no dime. Why? Because... Better is a poor man that walketh in integrity. Child of God, I know that things are hard now. I know 
The country is hard. The country. It's not only you. The whole country is hard. It's not your pocket. The country itself is hard. Africa is hard. The world is hard. But child of God, integrity is better than force. If you fight just to be called billionaire, millionaire, and you fight in the wrong way, you are the most miserable person. According to the world up to today, the richest man to ever live on earth is called Mansa Musa. He's a Muslim. He was a Muslim. Let me say that one. He was a Muslim. <coughs> you are not allowed, child of God. You are not allowed. You are not allowed to take those kind of positions. Let them go tell you be in that position. We are not of that world. If we want to do our own force, if we want to do our own force and say who is now in the body of Christ in Christianity, who is the richest man, we have to make sure it's not about money. It should not even be with the man of God who has the biggest church. Because if you think that the crowd, crowd is, is, also, is also a blessing from God, then Bernard Boy, <laughs> you know Bernard Boy, you know crowd puller, Shakira, Beyonce, Kanye West, these, they are crowd pullers than men of God. Let's say that this man of God is coming to this stadium and let's say that Lionel Messi is coming to this stadium to showcase something. And let's see how many people will go for that and how many people will go. And what, 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 what are you? The devil has more members even than Jesus Christ in this world. Are you telling me that makes the devil more powerful? Our measurement of the blessed God child of God is sick, is flawed, is disturbed, is wrong. I leave you to the grace of God. I commend you to his love. And I end with this. If men of God really believe that a person who does not have Christ is wretched, if they truly believe that scripture, that a man, a person who does not have Jesus in his life is broke, is poor, is miserable, let them go and preach to Dangote. Until then, shalom. God bless you, child of God. If you want to sow a seed to support this ministry of truth and life, I want you to go ahead and send your seed to the number on your screen and support the ministry. Support truth and life. Be anxious for nothing, child of God. With prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving, make your request known unto God. And what will come to you is the peace of God. It's not money. It's not a wife. It's not a car. It's not a house. What comes to you is the peace of God that passes all understanding. If it comes with a car, then you take it. If it's a wife, then you take it. But if it comes alone, be happy with only that. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. Keep on sharing the link. Let somebody be blessed by this. And tell your pastor to preach to Dangote. God bless you. Shalom.